So Kalerho was burying Charius in Miletus, while Charius was working in Caria in chains. He was soon physically worn out with digging, for many things weighed on him, weariness, neglect, his chains, and above all his love. He wanted to die, but was kept from doing so by a faint hope that perhaps someday he would see Kalerho. Then Polycharmus, the friend who had been captured with him, since he saw that Charius could not work and was being beaten and shamefully mistreated, said to the overseer, Apportion a special area to us, so that you do not set the other prisoners' laziness to our account, and we will do our share each day. The overseer agreed and assigned their share. Polycharmus, a strapping young man who was not enslaved to love, a cruel master, completed both their allotted portions of work practically single-handed, and he gladly took on most of the work to save his friend. So they were in this miserable situation, and eventually had to realize they were no longer free. Meanwhile, the satrap Mithridates returned to Caria. He was a different man from when he had gone to Miletus. He was pale and thin because he had a burning, smarting wound in his heart. Consumed with passion for Kalerho, he would have perished altogether if he had not found some consolation in the following way. Some of the men in Charius's chain gang, there were 16 of them all told, shot in a dark hut, broke their chains in the night, murdered the overseer, and tried to escape. They failed because the dogs barking gave them away. They were caught that night and all imprisoned more carefully in stocks. And the next day, the estate manager reported the incident to his master. Without even seeing them or hearing their defense, the master at once ordered the crucifixion of the 16 men in the hut. They were brought out chained together at foot and neck, each carrying his cross. The men executing the sentence added this grim public spectacle to the inevitable punishment as an example to frighten the other prisoners. Now, Charia said nothing when he was led off with the others, but Polycharmus, as he carried his cross, said, Kalerho, it is because of you that we are suffering like this. You are the cause of all our troubles. The supervisor heard what he said and concluded that some woman was their accomplice in their bold enterprise. So to get her punished too and have an investigation made to do into the plot, he at once detached Polycharmus from the chain that bound them all and took him to Mithridates. Mithridates was lying in a garden, beside himself with despair, picturing Kalerho to himself as he had seen her in her grief, absorbed in the thought of her. He was displeased to see even his servant. Look, why are you bothering me? he asked. It is necessary, sir, was the reply. I have discovered the origin of that dreadful crime. The damnable villain knows an accursed woman who was an accomplice in the murder. At these words, Mithridates frowned menacingly. Tell me who this woman is, he said, who was in this plot and helped you commit this crime. Polycharmus said he did not know. He had no part in the business at all. Then he called for whips. Fire was brought. Preparations were made for torture. Now one of them laid hands on Polycharmus. Tell us the name of the woman, he said, who you said was the cause of your troubles. Kalerho, said Polycharmus. Mithridates was startled at the name. He thought that by some unfortunate coincidence, the woman had the same name. So he was no longer very eager to pursue the investigation in case he eventually found himself obliged to do violence to that sweet name. But when his friends and household urged him to conduct the search more carefully, he said, Get Kalerho here. So they started hitting Polycharmus and asking him who she was and where they were to fetch her from. Poor Polycharmus was distressed. 
but he did not want to bring a false accusation against any woman. Why are you making this pointless fuss, he said, trying to find a woman who isn't here. It is Calarho of Syracuse I was talking about, the daughter of the general Hermocrates. At these words, Mithridates blushed violently and burst into sweat. In fact, a tear even dropped from his eye in spite of himself, whereupon Polycharmus himself fell silent, and nobody knew what to do. Eventually, Mithridates managed to pull himself together. What do you have to do with that Calarho? he said. Why did you speak her name when you were going to be executed? Sir, it is a long story, replied Polycharmus, and it will not do me any good now. This is not the time to bother you with my chatter. Besides, I am afraid that my friend will be gone before me if I take too long, and I want to share his death, too. His audience's mood softened. Their anger changed to pity. Mithridates was more overcome than anyone. Don't be afraid, he said. You won't be bothering me with your story. I am a sympathetic man. Take courage and tell me everything. And don't leave anything out. Who are you? Where are you from? How did you get to Caria? Why are you working the fields in a chain gang? Above all, tell me about Calarho, and tell me who your friend is.